This video covers how the pulse oximeter, a commonly used medical device, can contribute to racial health disparities, as guided by the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice teaching framework. The 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the clinical and learning context, the current standard of a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take for health equity. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this video, you will be able to recognize the limitations of pulse oximeters in patients with darker skin tones and understand how the historically biased development of medical devices can contribute to health inequities today. A 15-month-old black female infant presents to an emergency room for cough and fever. She is diagnosed with viral bronchiolitis and the decision to admit to the hospital depends on her oxygen saturation level. On pulse oximetry, her oxygen level is consistently around 93% but her degree of respiratory distress seems out of proportion to her mild hypoxia. The learner presents the patient to the attending and says, The patient appears to be in some respiratory distress, but based on her oxygen saturation, I wouldn't recommend admitting her to the hospital. How might structural racism be affecting patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how these two clinicians navigate this conversation. This is a good opportunity for us to talk about how even medical devices can perpetuate racial bias. This wasn't something I learned during my training, but it's very important for us to know in order to provide equitable care for all our patients. Let's spend a few minutes talking about this. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. The pulse oximeter is used universally to assess for hypoxia, but recently its accuracy in patients with darker skin tones has been called into question. Has anyone ever discussed this with you? No. In fact, I didn't think it was possible for medical devices to be influenced by bias. Let's start by understanding the basic principles of how pulse oximeters work. What do you know about its function? Well, a pulse oximeter is often placed on a finger and provides a numerical estimation of oxygen levels in the body. It detects changes to red and infrared light as it passes through the finger. That's right! But any variables that impact light absorption can also decrease accuracy of the calculation. These include wearing nail polish, decreased blood circulation, and darker skin pigmentation. Specifically, melanin, the pigment in skin cells, can absorb light in a way that overestimates oxygenation. Many current sensor-based devices that rely on contacting the skin, such as Apple Watches and the Fitbit, have previously reported higher degrees of device error for darker skin tones. The science behind that makes sense, but shouldn't pulse oximeters have corrections to provide accurate measurements for patients of all skin tones? How did pulse oximeters that do not consider skin tone and melanin come to be developed? The issue lies in who has been historically included in these studies to develop pulse oximeters. In the past, many medical devices were calibrated mostly on light-skinned white individuals. It was not until 1990 that the FDA required more representation than merely all white male subjects for medical device clearance studies. In February 2021, the FDA issued a safety communication specifically recognizing the limitations of pulse oximeters in darker skin tones. It outlined that FDA clearance for pulse oximeters will require at least 15% of test subjects to have dark skin pigmentation. Is there evidence for how these inaccuracies have impacted clinical outcomes for our patients? Unfortunately, yes. A recent study in adults found that the incidence of occult or undiagnosed hypoxemia was three times greater in black patients than white patients. There is greater variability in pulse ox accuracy in patients self-identified as black, followed by Hispanic, Asian, and then white. 
This difference was also noticed between black and white infants, which led to an increased incidence of occult hypoxemia in black children. Racial bias in the form of a few percentage points on a pulse oximeter reading can have significant impacts on health disparities. The overestimation of oxygen saturation can lead to inappropriate triage of patients with darker skin. It may affect whether a patient is sent to the emergency room from the clinic, and from the emergency room, whether a doctor recommends the patient is hospitalized, and afterwards, when can a patient be safely discharged from the hospital. Without this knowledge, I may have incorrectly sent our patient home based on inaccurate pulse oximetry levels. What can we do to reduce these inequities for patients with respiratory issues? As clinicians, we need to recognize that historical racism can permeate even the medical devices we presume are unbiased and objective. Acknowledging the limitations of these devices is a first step towards change. Applying this understanding can allow us to assess patients beyond the vice values and rely more on their clinical presentation. We should consider whether and how the medical devices that we use have been tested across diverse populations before generalizing. This will ensure that the results are reliable with predictable accuracy. So bring this back to our patient with bronchiolitis, what should we do instead? From our discussion, what I learned is, historical racial bias affects modern day medical devices and how accurate they are in diverse patient populations. Pulse oximeter reportings are more likely to overestimate blood oxygen saturation in patients with darker skin. This affects many clinical decisions and can contribute to health disparities. To practice more equitably, we need to consider not merely only the oxygen saturation value, but a patient's clinical picture in their entirety. I recommend we reevaluate our patient's symptoms and reconsider the decision to hospitalize based on a more holistic approach that includes pulse oximetry values but also emphasizes the patient's clinical presentation. I agree. Let's go revisit the patient together. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5mmracialjustice.stanford.edu.